Hey, this is Wolf from Barefoot Bushcraft, and we are here today to talk about the K-Bar 1230 knife. It's important before we talk about the K-Bar knife itself to talk about the history of the K-Bar brand. So the K-Bar brand was started in 1800, so 200 years ago, under the name of Union Cutlery. And then uh, it was bought in 1966 by a company called Coal National. And they owned K-Bar from 1966 to 1996. And one of the tools that they made during that time is this particular knife. So this is the K-Bar 1230. There wasn't a whole lot of information available about the knife on the internet, uh, other than in the K-Bar catalog, which gave us a little bit of manufacturing information about the blade. So we'll have a quick look here, a little closer look at the blade where it actually says K-Bar stainless on it. Uh, we'll do the best. There we go. The camera can pick that up. And you see that font right there is a lot different than the modern K-Bar font. And that was just something Cole National did. And then it says 1230. And if we flip the blade around uh, on the back, it just says Japan stainless on it. So it doesn't actually tell us what kind of metal it is. Uh, most of the modern K-Bar blades are made for that uh, that Crovan material, 1095 Crovan. So we really don't have any information on this. Um, it is listed as just having pinned hardwood scales. So it's a very unusual knife. Now they made them for quite a while. The uh, K-Bar manufacturing website where they have a master list and it lists the 1230 retailing for $25.75. I will say I paid a lot more than that for it and it was manufactured between 1985 and 1998. Um, so yeah, the only, one of the unique things that I like about this blade uh, for bushcraft and survival use is it's got this really cool spine on it. So that spine is, says it's a serrated thumb spine, that's what it's listed as, um, but it's really sharp. Like that is, if, if I rake my finger or my thumb over top of that, it's super, super sharp. So what that tells us is this is going to be really awesome for making, uh, making fire with a ferro rod knife is only as good as it cuts so um, it looks like somebody put a new edge on this blade some time ago I don't think that's the factory edge that looks almost more like a scanty grind or scanty grind on there um, so it's not meant of course for heavy heavy work so you're not going to be using this for bushcraft and batoning and stuff like that you couldn't use it for shaving and cutting so this is just a piece of wood it's got a nice little sharp angle on it so we'll try to make some shavings and I know it makes some really nice shavings um, Again, you know, they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be beautiful. They just have to curl a little bit. And you can see it, it does that job. Makes really, really nice shavings. Even though it's, you know, Japanese steel, um, I don't have a problem with it. I love the K-Bar brand, and I, I love how that makes some shavings on there. Pretty happy with that. Uh, I don't have to work too terribly hard on it. Let's try a different type of wood. That's a, a hardwood. This is something here I just found in the forest and uh, it as well makes beautiful beautiful little shavings on it does exactly what a piece of wood needs to do when you're using it out in the woods earlier i was mentioning that this here has this beautiful serrated back on this blade and i love this and it's very very sharp to the touch and i love how this rips spark now i know many people feel that stainless steel doesn't throw spark this says stainless steel on it but watch the amount of spark that this blade will create like it just rips spark. Like I just love how it, and I'm not putting a lot of effort into it, but man, oh man, it just rips the spark off the blade. Um, so it does a really, really good job on that. So you certainly won't be dissatisfied if you use your ferro rod with this blade, uh, and it does a great, great job on, on that. So let's uh, put a little piece of cotton down here and uh, throw some spark into that so you can see how quick it, it, it will ignite. And you can see I'm quite a distance away. Look at that. Puts that cotton ball to light right away. So the last thing I'll talk about in this quick little video is the sheath. It's made out of leather. Now I added this, uh, this braided uh, neck piece to it. Now I love the neck carry. I love it's called, also sometimes called the Kohansky carry or Korjansky carry depending on your dialect. Uh, this knife, if you're into bushcraft, makes a really beautiful neck knife. It has this nice 
uh, deep, deep sheath, the dangler style sheath, so that it goes way in there. So that tells me you're not gonna lose that very easily. And it, I mean, it does slip out, but when gravity is acting on it, it's gonna hang itself in there really nicely. So it's got a nice deep sheath. The sheath is real leather, which I kind of love. Um, it's nicely stitched on both sides. The stitched is at the back, and it has the K-bar written on it in that fancy font that they don't use today with a little dash in the middle. Um, so it's kind of kind of just kind of a neat piece. It's a nice little vintage K-bar piece. I really like it. I love K-bar brands. Um, I have used this knife now for quite some time uh, and use it for lots and lots of students. It's nice when you need something quick, something around your neck, something you uh, want to make sure you're always present and aware of. That's a whole other video talking about the neck carry. But yeah, that's that. So the K-Bar 1230 knife uh, made in Japan. They're not that easy to find. Uh, again, this blade came from uh, eBay and uh, it was, uh, I don't know, sent to me from somebody in the United States. But it's a great little piece. Again, if you love the brand and you love the knife, a uh, lot of great history to a piece like this. And man, the, the thing that I'm most impressed with, again, is just how that little spine right there uh, that kind of serrated thing just throws spark so well. Uh, the blade itself, I've used it, like I said, for a while now. It holds the edge pretty decent. You can put whatever kind of edge you want on it. Nor historically, K-bars come with like a 20 degree edge, uh, but I think this one has been redone to 15, which is the scanny grind, but that's uh, another discussion on itself. Again, if you enjoy the blade and you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing to us. I, uh, all our social links are down below for Facebook and Instagram. And once again, I wanna thank you for so much for watching this video. I'm Wolf for Barefoot Bushcraft. Please consider subscribing.